In this video, we'll learn how to get started doing yoga. As you start your yoga journey, it's necessary to keep in mind how important your mental attitude is for success. Bodily agility and flexibility will come with practice, but to begin practicing, you need the correct mindset. For a beginner, it can be very confusing. Just picking out the right yoga outfit can be a headache. Then how do you decide which yoga practice is the best one for you? So start by relaxing and consider the following your roadmap to successful yoga practice. Rid yourself of expectations. If you have viewed pictures of yoga poses and have decided that you could never achieve that type of agility, keep in mind that it undoubtedly took years, perhaps decades for the model to get to that level. He or she was specifically chosen for his or her expertise. Yoga is not about achieving the perfect pose. It's about improved breathing and alignment, one step at a time, and the rest will follow. If you can't touch your toes, touch your knees. Instead, toss any expectations you may have and start with an open mind. Yoga is non-judgmental. It is not a competition. Although with practice, you will naturally improve. Age and body shape are mental limitations and have no effect on your ability to begin yoga practice. If you are physically unable to do a particular pose, there are a dozen other poses you can master. Find the right teacher. As you've probably figured out in high school and college, the right teacher can make a huge difference in any class. If you don't feel motivated and inspired by your yoga class, perhaps the teacher is wrong for you. This doesn't mean the teacher is bad in any way, but he or she is not helping you meet your goals. Consider whether the teacher is teaching things that you need to learn. Regardless of how good the teacher is, if he or she isn't helping you meet your needs, look for another one. Your best friend may rave about her hot yoga class, but if this isn't for you, you need to keep looking for another class. Perhaps you want something less physical and more spiritual. There are plenty of yoga teachers out there, and one will be just right for you. Are you moving towards your goal? A good teacher will guide you step by step along the journey. If you feel at a standstill, perhaps the teacher is not for you. Can you ask questions? A good yoga teacher is available before and after class for his or her students and will listen and address individual concerns. If your teacher is not approachable, find one who is. Don't hesitate to ask your teacher about his or her training or philosophy. The best type of teacher is someone who views yoga as a continuous work in progress and is still studying with his or her own teacher. It's the yoga, not the outfit. You know, one of the major reasons people don't go or stop going to the gym, they feel self-conscious among a group of perfect bodies. Yoga has become so trendy, people are actually fretting about which designer outfit is best and what color mat they should buy. Do you really need $125 Dior pants to attain enlightenment? Wear whatever feels comfortable and don't compare yourself to anyone else. Yoga is a personal journey. As mentioned in this video course before, it's not a competition. All you need for yoga is a simple pair of leggings, shorts, tank top, or t-shirt. Seriously, you're not trying to make a fashion statement. The only thing you need to keep in mind is comfort. Special outfits are available for hot yoga. You'll want a yoga mat that lasts, so do choose a quality mat. It will be an excellent investment. Some yoga classes can cost up to $20. This can add up, but it shouldn't be a deterrent to get started. There are ways to practice yoga on a budget. The local YMCA, gyms, and some community centers frequently offer yoga classes at low rates. During warm weather, yoga groups may meet at local parks. When signing up for class, buy in bulk. Signing up for 20 classes at a time instead of the individual classes may get you a discounted rate. Some yoga studios rent mats and water bottles. They may only charge a dollar or so, but the extra expense can add up. Bring your own mat and bottled water from home. Some yoga studios offer karma yoga classes. These classes are free in exchange for doing some work at the studio such as manning the front desk and cleaning up after a class. If cost is a concern, don't hesitate to ask about this option. Some studios will be happy to trade a class for a bit of service rendered. The best time to practice yoga. 
handy excuse not to get started with yoga practice is time. The fact is, we are all busy. We all have the same 24-hour day. If we intend to accomplish something, we need to make time. Traditional yoga involves sunrise or sunset, but using any time for yoga is better than no yoga at all. Although practicing yoga on a full stomach is not a good idea. Get up an hour earlier than usual and do your asanas before you do anything else. It energizes and activates your body and mind in the best possible way. The physical poses get your body going while the breathing clears the mind. Yoga intentions. Some yoga teachers ask you to set your intentions at the start of the program. What exactly does that mean? Setting an intention is not needed for you to enjoy the benefits of your yoga sessions, but it can take them to a higher level. Setting your yoga intention brings yoga into your daily life. Yoga doesn't stop when the asanas are done. They are supposed to be at the beginning of your spiritual journey, not at the end. Yoga was originally developed as a spiritual quest. The rest simply followed. Intentions clarify your purpose in practicing yoga. It focuses on a personal quality that you wish to improve or enhance. Perhaps you hope for greater patience, awareness, or compassion toward others. Maybe you wish to let go of past hurts. Make that real in your mind. Your intentions are the bridge between your poses and the rest of your life. Yoga is not like walking out of the gym and forgetting about it until the next class. The mental practice should be part of your daily life. You will set your mind to make it real by keeping your intentions in focus. That is genuine spiritual elevation. Before you begin, talk to your doctor. It's true that anyone can practice yoga. However, you should discuss any possible limitations with your doctor before getting started. This won't prevent you from doing yoga, but it might simply limit a few movements to prevent injury. Your doctor might also have some ideas about which type of yoga is best for you. Having a doctor who is knowledgeable and supportive of yoga is a tremendous asset. Slow and easy does it. If yoga is a new experience for you, it is natural to be excited and jump right in. But the goal of yoga is not who can do the most poses in the least amount of time. Yoga is a slow and deliberate process. Each session should be devoted to making poses easier. Work at your own level of comfort. It cannot be stressed enough that yoga is non-competitive. If certain poses are more difficult than others, simply practice them more until they become easier. There's no time limit for mastering yoga poses. When poses become easier, go a bit beyond your comfort zone to reach the next level, but never to the point of physical discomfort. Begin at your own starting point. Joining a new yoga class where everyone else seems to know what they are doing can be intimidating, but that is the case when you begin any new endeavor. Regardless of anyone else, you are your own starting point. It is entirely irrelevant that everyone else is able to balance on one leg for 60 seconds while you keep tipping over. Instead of fretting, enjoy the progress as you keep improving. Savor who you are every step along the way. Self-acceptance is the essence of enlightenment. The spiritual side of yoga encourages compassion. Start with yourself. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz.